Welcome back. Among Us Nursley Jr. Welcome. Nice name. Uh, Van Darkholm and it's God himself with the Prime Cells. Danke schön, danke schön. That was this. Hilariously inaccurate medieval art of animals. Medieval art of animals often looked a little different from the real world species. And this mismatch That's was compounded enough, with any animal the artist had clearly never seen before. European texts from this period are full of hilarious attempts to depict far off species. So let's take a look at some of the most inaccurate. Bearing in mind it would be difficult to know what, say, an elephant would look like if you'd never seen one before. And speaking of elephants, they're a good place to start when it comes to inaccurate depictions. Medieval artists seemed to struggle with the concept of the trunk especially, often rendering it in bizarre ways. Many illustrations also depict elephants supporting entire stone castles on their backs, spurring from myths elephants were mighty enough to carry around entire buildings. This is of course incorrect. Sounds very good. Another large African animal medieval artist struggled to portray accurately as the hippopotamus, possibly to an even greater extent than the elephant. Most illustrations of hippos from the era are way off, with an assortment of aquatic traits like tails and dorsal fins actual hippos don't possess. Other depictions almost make hippos look like strange horses, perhaps due to misunderstanding surrounding the animal's name, which means river horse in Latin. Up next we have the giraffe, an animal medieval artist portrayed with less frequency than the hippo or elephant. Compared to the hippo at the very least, some pieces of art actually get the giraffe's general appearance mostly right, emphasizing the long neck. Well, most of the time. Moving on to African predators, we have the hyena, an animal with rather inconsistent interpretations across different paintings. In some illustrations, the hyena features horns and almost resembles a carnivorous cow, while others are more dog-like. One curious trend is that in many images, hyenas appear to be consuming the dead. This is because of a common myth that the animals dug up cemeteries to eat human remains, a concept which is inaccurate. Moving to a different part of the world, another large predator which gets the short end of the stick in medieval art is the tiger. Far from the massive predatory felines of the real world, medieval tigers were small, dog-like creatures lacking the animal's trademark stripes. Strangely enough, in many illustrations the tiger is drawn looking in a mirror. This stems from a legend that a hunter could steal a tiger's cubs if they distracted the mother with her reflection, as the mother would mistake it for her cub. A pretty grim legend, and one that would more than likely result in immediate death if tried on a real tiger. Moving on to the world of birds, the ostrich is a species medieval artists seem to find particularly challenging. Most images of ostriches lack almost all of the animal's defining features, including their long neck and flightless nature. Indeed, many depictions of the ostrich just look like standard birds. Another unusual trend is the ostrich of medieval art is often shown abandoning its egg to roast in the sun. Although real ostriches do leave their eggs exposed in ground nests, this isn't because they're neglectful parents, their eggs do just fine out in the open. Furthermore, another odd trend is illustrating the birds eating an iron horseshoe. This comes from a myth that ostriches could digest anything, even metal. Once again, this is distinctly false. Another unique looking bird missing many of its most notable features is the pelican, which in medieval art is a short-beaked organism lacking its trademark throat pouch. A highly unusual theme is most depictions show pelican families eating each other. The bizarre cannibalism comes from a legend that pelican babies try to eat their parents when fully grown, prompting the parents to eat them in return. This is an obviously inaccurate notion, as any real species would die in just a few generations using such a behavioral model. Diving into the ocean, the next animal worth touching on is the whale, an aquatic leviathan which rarely looks anything like the real species in medieval art. In most depictions, the animal looks less like what we know of as a whale and more like a giant fish, to the point where some versions are even covered in fish-like scales. Some whales in medieval illustrations go a step further away from the real animal and seem to have legs. While we're dealing with the ocean, the dolphin is another interestingly, albeit incorrectly, portrayed marine mammal good. when it comes to For marine art. Like the dolphin. whale, the dolphin usually just resembles a giant, slightly goofy-looking fish. 
One aquatic organism which deviates even further from its real-life counterpart, however, is the sea turtle, which for some reason is often portrayed as bipedal with a massive tail. Sea turtles in medieval paintings also usually Just feature curiously shaped shield. shells and segmented toes. One depiction of the sea turtle even seems to look more like a hedgehog, with the artist likely hearing the animal was armored and incorrectly assuming the two species were equivalent. Going further inland, one semi-aquatic predator medieval artists took serious liberties with is the crocodile, with many images of the animal looking borderline unrecognizable. To be fair, some illustrations at least look more or less like a reptile, while others really deviate from crocodilian features, displaying hair, paws, bushy tails, and short, dog-like snouts. Then again, some of the drawings of crocodiles which don't include fur don't look all that better. Nearing the end of our list and truly veering into bizarre territory, we have the scorpion, another animal given fur and mammalian features without any clear explanation. There's something about giving a scorpion a non-arachnid face which makes it look so fundamentally absurd. At least some depictions give it more legs than a standard quadruped. Every face is well, fucking human some depictions. Face. At the very end of our journey, we have an animal you'd never be able to identify just by looking at medieval portrayals. The chameleon. Although in real life the animal is a lizard, medieval art is sometimes portrayed it as a horse-like organism. And sometimes more like a cat. In either case, one thing is for sure, it looks nothing like the animal it's based on. The error might come from phonetic similarities between chameleon and leon or lion, but truthfully, the reason why chameleons are so inaccurate in art from the period is anyone's guess. And that's where our list comes to an end. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I have another one like it on the strangest fiction of medieval monsters. Please consider subscribing. Three out of five. Death Thor's favorite one here, Phil Sukiman, Wine Glass.